Oui, on peut. Hein. On peut. <laughs> OK. So, uh, it is a pleasure for me to introduce Chris Lane uh, Custer from uh, Dijon and also IMPA, and who will talk about foliation on homogeneous varieties. So, please. So, thank you, Frank, for the introduction. And it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and also thank you the organizer for the opportunity of talking about the, my thesis problem. So today I'm going to talk about foliations on homogeneous varieties. So I will start defining homogeneous varieties and then I will define my problem and talk about my problem. So let's consider X a compact on a complex manifold. We say that X is a homogeneous, rational homogeneous variety. If it admits an atom of a Lie group and the atom is transitive. So, for example, we can consider the atom of the group SL n plus 1 on Pn, on the Grassmann of k plans on Pn, and also more generally in the flag varieties. So, those are also those are examples of homogeneous varieties. And we also can consider the action of uh, SO n plus 1 in the orthogonal Grassmann of lines containing a non degenerated quadric on Pn. So now I want to introduce a um, particular case of homogeneous varieties that I am interested. So I hope that uh, after I can explain why I am interested in these varieties. Um, so, to introduce these varieties, I will define the adjoint representation. So, let's consider X a connect simple reductive Lie group, and we can consider the small g in the, its Lie algebra. We consider the map that goes from G to the automorphism of G by conjugation. So, we consider theta of G in the map that takes X and goes to G, X, G minus 1. Minus one. And then we can define the adjoint representation of G in its Lie algebra, given by the derivative of this, this map theta G at the origin. And then we can have an action of the Lie group on the Lie algebra by this adjoint representation. And moreover, we can have an action of the Lie group in the projective, projectivization of the Lie algebra by this adjoint representation. And since you are considering uh, the Lie algebra is uh, simple, there is a unique closed orbit under this action, which we denote by X of G. And we have an embedding in the projectivization of uh, the Lie algebra. And this closed, unique closed Lie algebra is called the adjoint variety associated to the Lie algebra. This will be a non-singular, non-degenerate uh, projective variety. And one last thing, sorry, uh, is that we, since uh, it's a G, a simple Lie algebra, it's totally defined by the jinky, its jinky diagram and everything. It doesn't depend on the Lie group. So now I will give uh, just an example to you, just to have an idea on what kind of uh, variety I am interested in. So if you consider the adjoint variety associated to the SL n plus 1 will be a hyperplane set of Pn cross Pn. So if you consider the group SL n plus 1 and consider V the vector space C n plus 1, then the unique closed orbit of the Lie group will be the variety PV tensor PV dual intersected with the hyperplane given by the condition of the trace being zero. This embedding by the SEG embedding in the projectivization of the Lie algebra. Another case is if you consider the symplectic Lie algebra, we have the 
uh, the joint variety associated with the simplectically algebra will be the projective space P of it. So if you consider G the simplet SP n plus 1, acting on the projectivization of the Lie algebra, and V here is again the CN plus 1, then the unique closed Lie algebra, unique closed orbit will be the projectivization, the P of V, under the Veronese embedding. So now I will start talking a little bit about foliation. Um, given a variety and fixing a line bundle on this variety, a very interesting problem in the global theory of uh, Olormark foliation is to describe the space of codimension one foliations having the normal shift equal to this line bundle that we fix. So this will be given by the space of the one forms that satisfies the integrability condition omega wedge d omega is equal to zero, and also the saturation condition, which means that the condimension of the singular locus of this one form is greater or equal than two. And since we have these conditions, we can see that this will be a quasi projective variety. And for PN, this is already a very challenging problem. So for PN, we have the notion of the degree of a foliation, degree of a foliation of codimension one, which is given by the number of tangentes with a generic line. And uh, for degree D, we have that the normal shift of the foliation will be OPN D plus two. And the, the classification that we have is only for degree equal to zero, one, and two. For degree greater than two, is we have only partial classifications, not a whole classification. So now our problem will be, let's consider X a uh, homogeneous variety. We fix the embedding X in a projective space, and we want to describe the space of Codimension one foliation zone X having the normal shift equal to the pullback of a foliation of degree zero on PN. So, for example, one foliation of degree zero will be a pencil of hyperplant. We consider in PN um, P n minus two, and then we consider all the hyperplanes that contain this P n minus two. So these hyperplanes that we consider will be the leaves of the foliation. And one of our questions that we want to understand is, given this homogeneous variety, whether the foliation zone X will be a restriction of a pencil of hyperplanes on PN. So now I want to cite some reference in literature that were some papers that work with similar problems. So the first reference is due to Araujo, Correa, and Massarenti, where they work with complete intersection. They are the, with the same problem, a complete intersection, embedding in a projective space, and try to describe the space of foliation and foliations in the complete intersection. Also, there is a paper due to Gomes Figueira, where he looks for hypersurface. He studied the extensions and the restriction of the foliations on hypersurface. So he also he looked for the restriction. And also he looks for conditions given a foliation on a hypersurface embedding in a PN. What conditions can we apply to this foliation that to be sure that this foliation is a, can be extended to a foliation on PN? And the last paper that I want to cite is due to Benedetti, Fainz, and Muniz, where he, they work with codimension one foliations on homogeneous varieties. And one thing that they prove in this paper is the following. They prove that we have an isomorphism if you have X embedded in PN, 
Then we have an isomorphism between the space of codimension and foliation on X and on PN. For some particular cases of uh, cominusculus Gras Grasmannian, in particular, uh, the X being the Grasmannian of lines in PN, embedded by the Kluger embedding. Uh, I don't know if they can see here when I am writing. It's okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, it can. Uh, thank you. So, in this paper, they also proved that there are some examples where we may not have an isomorphism like this. And they actually, they proved that, for, for example, for the orthogonal Grasmannian of lines on, on, in PN contained contain in a non-degenerate quadric, we have that the ideals defining the space of codimension on foliation on X and on PN, they are different. So we don't know if they there are more components or not. So I am interested in these problems that uh, we may have more components. So this is the reason that uh, orto the orthogonal Grasmani of lines in PN is an example of um, homogeneous adjoint variety. So this is the reason that I start studying adjoint varieties. So my problem is, let's consider X a simple Lie algebra, and we can consider the adjoint variety X of G embedded in the projective space of P of G to describe the space again of the foliation, dimensional and foliation X of G, having the normal shift equal to the pullback of the normal shift of a foliation of the green zero on PN. Uh, since the, we saw in the example that the projective space is a, a joint variety, we start storing the projective space under the Veronese embedding. Because the, this will be a, a joint variety. Uh, and then, if you consider this example, look, uh, if you consider a foliation on P9 of degree zero, we can see that the pullback of this foliation will be a pencil of quadrics, which we means a foliation of degree two. And we already have the classification of foliation of degree zero, degree one, degree two. So we can see that. Uh, uh, the foliations uh, of degree nine in of degree zero on P nine goes to the foliations which are given by pencil of quadrics in P three, but we all have we have more components in the P3 classification of foliations on P three of degree two. So this is an example that we have the uh, another morphism between the space of one form, but we don't have an isomorphism between the space, uh, the, the foliations, because in the foliations of degree zero on P9 uh, is one component, and when you look for the foliations on P3 having degree, degree two, it, we have six components. So we want to see the other components, where they come from, and to see if you can describe this in a point of view of representation theory. So to do this, uh, I will start defining some results and on the representation theory. So not that if you consider G uh, X a uh, geohomogeneous variety, this action is transitive. So the stabilizers of all points in X, they are conjugated by a subgroup, P of G, and is a result 
in the theory of homogeneous variety that we have an equivalence of categories between the irreducible representation of V, of P, and the geomogeneous irreducible vector bundles on X. Okay. So here, by geomogeneous vector bundle, I mean that um, the action of um, G on X leads to an action on the vector bundle and these actions are compatible. And here another thing is since the representation is irreducible, there is a unique uh, highest weight, then we can denote the representation by V lambda and then we can We can associate to this representation with highest weight V lambda, the vector bundle with weight corresponding with this weight, given by uh, the problem quotient by some equivalence relation. So, and this is a theorem due to bot bottle veil that it helps um, a lot in this theory of um, correlations on holomorphic homogeneous variety uh, and it says the following uh, the global section of this vector bundle with highest weight uh, corresponding to the highest weight lambda is isomorphic the, the representation with highest weight uh, lambda, where here the lambda is also dominating with respect to G. So this is a very useful theorem. So in the paper by Benedetti, Farinzi, or the, or the <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> In the paper by Benedetti finds immunis using this this theorem, they were able to prove that we have an isomorphism between the space of one forms in X with X bed in PN. And also uh, isomorphism between the space of three forms in X So computing the the corresponding representation to this vector bundle and then to the other one in PN, they were able to compute and see that they are isomorphic, and this helps them to describe the the isomorphism between the foliations on X, the cosminus cos Grassmann. So now we what I want to do is to look for the components in the space of foliations on P3 of degree 2 that we know that it has six components and to see if you can describe these, these components by, with a point of view of the, this representation theory. So to do this, we compute the global section of the shift OPVD. Here, let's start. Uh, v is the 
vector space C4, and then we consider the very nice embedding going to P3 to P9. Then the space of PV will be a P3 will be a joint variety under the action of the SP4. So computing the corresponding representation with the this vector bundle OPVD, we can see that this will be the representation with highest weight D lambda one, and the corresponding representation with this other uh, vector bundle will be the representation with highest weight two lambda one plus lambda two. So we want to see inside this this vector space here. Uh, how can we describe the space of uh, the component here? So the first component that uh, we look is the component uh, logarith logarithm component log two two, which is given by pencil of quadrants. So we consider a quadrant, two quadrants f zero and f one in P three, and then we go to the omega the one form given by the form f1 df0 minus f0 df1 this will define a codimension and foliation of degree 2 in p3 and we can see that we can represent this component by a zig equivariant map which is given by the following we can consider the product of the representation of these representations, p of v two lambda one times p v of two lambda one, going to the projectivization of the product v two lambda one times v two lambda one, and then this this representation v two lambda one tensor v two lambda one will not be irreducible. It will be a sum of irreducible representation because here we are considering reductive group. So it will be a sum of direct sum of reducible representations. And one of the summons is the representation with highest weight 2 lambda 1 plus lambda 2. So we consider the project. The project. project projection uh, that goes to this project product to the representation with highest weight two lambda one plus lambda two. What, what is lambda two? Sorry? What is lambda two here? Where, where does it come from? It comes from this map. This oh. P of V tensor by two. It's the representation with highest weight two lambda one oh. because it's twisted. So if you consider the S two of V will be the by representations properties will be the representation with highest weight two lambda one. Uh, lambda 2 is the wedge product. Is the when you consider the, for example, the wedge product of a representation go to the wedge product of 2 of the lambda 1. I may not sure, but this goes to the representation with lambda 2. It's some like this is a standard um, properties of representation theory between like we to compute the symmetric or the wedge, and this is properties of the weight of the. Okay. So now I want to store the component given by pullback linear of foliation on P two. So we consider a vector space of dimension three in V, 
remember our v is c4 so p of u will be p2 and then every form one form in p of v p of p of u will be integrable and we can also compute the corresponding representation which will be the representation given by this Huggers way two lambda one plus lambda two then we can compute do this with every vector space, subspace in the Grassmannian of three planes on V, and we can have a bundle over the Grassmannian of three planes on V. And if you consider the canonical relative bundle on this bundle, we can have the, the property that the global section on this canonical relative bundle is isomorphic to the global section of the this bundle corresponding bundle with highest weight two lambda one plus lambda two over the Grassmannian. So these are isomorphic. And also, if you have uh, by bot borel value properties and some symmetries in the Dinkin diagram, we can have an uh, isomorphism between the global section of this vector bundle with highest weight corresponding to the highest weight 2 lambda 1 plus lambda 2 on P3 and also the same bundle over the Grassmannian of three planes on V. And then the complete linear system uh, of this canonical relative bundle will give a map that go to this bundle to P of the representation that has highest weight to lambda 1 plus lambda 2, which was the, that one that we are interested in. And the last one component that I want to tell is the exceptional component. For this, I still don't know how to map this component in the... I still don't know how to map this whole component by a G-equivalent map in this projectivization of this vector space. So I want to give a good description for what I'm interested in, which was given by in this paper by Calvo and Ryden Pukerman. And a good this good rest description is the following we consider uh, SL2 acting on P1 and then we can see that SL2 by the Veronese embedding it also acts on P4 this will give a foliation codimension on foliation on P4 which has degree 3 but if you consider uh, the hyperplane a hyperplane osculating hyperplane to the Veronese curve, which is the image of the Veronese embedding, this foliation will correspond to a foliation. The restriction of this foliation will be uh, in this component, as the exceptional component. So what I am trying to do is looking for the others are joint variety. So remember, we have the hyperplane section of PN cross PN. Under the action of SCL and plus one, we have the projective space, which we all have the, the description, but we have also the orthogonal Grassmannian of lines in PN. So I'm looking for the, the space of cogeneration and foliations on these varieties and try to describe similar components. For example, if you have like a action of um, SL2 on these varieties, and you can describe a codimension one foliation on this variety. I'm trying to describe the space of codimension one foliations on the adjoint variety by looking for these examples. So that was I want to tell. Are there any questions?
George, are there any questions from uh, IMPA? Any questions from here? Hello? <laughs> no? That's clear. So, uh, do you expect uh, to have several irreducible components on the other uh, adjoint varieties also, or are there are cases where you know that there is only one, that uh, the only component is the one coming from pencil of hyperplanes? Um, I don't know if there is case that uh, there are only the ones given by restrictions on PN, but I know that, for example, if you consider PN, the first example of adjoint varieties, I already, I didn't, uh, I already have some example of foliations here in this space that uh, under the cycling bedding here on P big N, we don't have the, these foliations doesn't come for, from the ambient space. So we have some examples related to, similar to the component pullback linear of P2. Um, for me, it's similar to this component because we can consider PN, cross PN, going to P big N. And then if you consider the project of uh, a line P1 cross P1 going to P3. We can see that uh, omega one form here on P3, if you restrict it, this one omega to the image of this map, it will be uh, the image of this map will be a surface. So if you cons uh, restrict this, Reform, it will be zero. So every one form here can be, we can consider the pullback on PN, and this one form will be a foliation that uh, it will be a distribution of class one on PN, but uh, here will be a foliation, it defines a foliation. So we have some examples also under the action of uh, SL2 on PN plus PN. If okay, thank you very much. Okay. If there are no other questions, so let us thank uh, There is Christine. a question here. There is, yes? there, there is questions here. Ah, okay. We are, we are not in a hurry. We have time. And hello, Chris. Uh, I don't know if I understand them well, but... You are trying to describe the foli foliation space, uh, space of foliations on the uh, adjoint variety, right? Right. And with normal shift, the pullback of OP2. Yes, yes. But what if you take like uh, the pullback of OP3, OP4? Hmm. Uh, yeah, we know that we can restrict this will be like uh, on P big end on the ambient space it will define foliations of degree one and two but I didn't see any work on this case I didn't saw it uh, any work because the first case is where the foliation is uh, of degree zero a pencil of herpy plant so I didn't saw any other orcs looking for homogeneous varieties and having the higher number of There is the work of uh, Mateus, no? He, he oh, does yes. that for the, for the hyperquadrics. He, he looks for the restriction of O2 and O3 and give a complete classification of the irreducible components in both cases. O2 is the, what you expect. O3, you have uh, two irreducible components in dimension three and just one in higher dimensions. So this is in his thesis. Okay. Thank you, George, for the answer. And where is Mateus? Mateus is teaching, I think. He's giving classes today. He has to work. Okay. <laughs> 
Other questions? There are no more questions here, Frank. Okay, so let us thank uh, Chris Lane again. <laughs> so we resume in four minutes. Perfect.